So, backpacking. The concept is pretty simple. Take everything you need to survive in the wilderness, put it into a backpack, and start hiking. It sounds pretty easy. But when we first started, we had no idea what we were doing. We packed way too much gear. Forgot more things than we can count. And we've eaten a cold meal more than once. Needless to say, we've got some experience. It's taken us a while, but after seven years of hiking some of the most beautiful trails in the U.S., we finally feel like we have all of our gear dialed. So today, we're going to share all of the gear that we use for backpacking. What's up, everybody? Hey! We're back. We got us a little campsite here, even though we're not actually camping. Uh, we're just gonna fake camp so that <laughs> we can talk about all of our backpacking gear. Yeah, so, we've got a lot of new things. Brand like, new backpacks. New backpacks. They're kind of sick. Um, and then I'm just a lot of old things that we've had for years and it's just worked, so yeah, didn't so need to change it. You might see some familiar stuff, a lot of new stuff, but we figured it's the beginning of backpacking season. Everybody's starting to buy gear and everything, so yeah. We should go through all of our gear now and then the rest of the year we won't have to worry about it because our setup's pretty dialed. I don't think we're gonna be changing anything this year, so. Yeah, so we're just gonna set up camp right now and just go through each piece of gear one by one and let you guys know what we're doing. Yeah, so welcome to the big gear video. Yay, gear! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess you wouldn't be able to go backpacking if you didn't have a backpack, so <laughs> that's where we're gonna start this video. Um, we just got some brand new backpacks this year. They are the North Face Phantom 38 liter bags, which we thought was gonna be too small. Yeah, but. our goal this year is to be a lot lighter, faster, more efficient. I'm trying so, to climb some big stuff. So we had to get a smaller bag. We didn't have to, but we wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> we did. <laughs> so yeah, we downgraded. I was using a 65 liter bag before, mm -hmm. and now I'm using 38 liters, and it's still not even full. Yeah, I was like a little worried it'd be too small, but we packed pretty much all of our backpacking gear in here today, and there's still a bunch of room in our bag. So yeah. I think it'll work. So the goal is to be able to bring all of our gear, obviously all the stuff that we need to camp and eat and stay alive, and also bring our climbing gear. So these are alpine style bags. They don't really have any pockets. It's mm -hmm. mostly just one big open pocket. Um, you've got a couple, I mean, you have like a little snack pouch on the hip and- Zipper on the brain. Yeah, a zipper on the brain where I'll keep like camera batteries and keys and like my headlamp. But otherwise, everything else just goes on the inside of the bag, which for some people could be a little inconvenient, but for us, I think it works. I mean, yeah. we don't want things falling out of our bags and stuff when we're scrambling or climbing, so. Yep, first yeah. impressions, um, love the fit. It's super comfortable on the shoulders and the hips. It's light and like, I can, I feel like I'd be, I could be ag it's agile It's so with light, it. like I can run if I had to. Yeah. yeah, like I'm connected to my backpack. Yeah, so <laughs> we've only used them for two and a half miles so far, which was basically to get here. Yeah. But yeah, these are gonna be our main bags this year. Um, and if we change our minds about them at all, we'll definitely let you guys know. But first impressions, they're super sick. Stoked on it. They look really cool too, so. So this is our tent. Um, it's a little bit of a new item for us. Uh, if you've been around for a while, you probably are used to seeing the orange North Face tent. Um, but this one is the one we're gonna be using this year. It is the Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL2. So it's an ultralight tent, but it's actually made for bike packing. If you watched our bike packing videos, we talked about it a little bit already. But yeah, we kind of just decided we like it a little more. It's actually a little bigger than our North Face tent and a lot lighter too. So again, with the smaller backpacks, we're trying to go lighter this year. Uh, we decided to start packing this tent instead. We just stuff it into the North Face stuff sack um, because the bike packing sack doesn't really make sense when you're putting it in a backpack. The only complaints we really have about it is 
because it's an ultralight tent, the material is definitely thin. Um, I can see it getting ripped pretty easily, so we have to be careful, especially with the dog. It's a little more fragile, but so far I haven't had any problems with that. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of the color. Uh, if you watched our last gear video, we talked about how the North Face tent was orange and we really liked the fact that it was orange. This one's a little more camouflaged, which isn't gonna look as good on video. And also, God forbid we get stranded or lost or something, it's gonna be much harder for search and rescue to find this color than it would to be, you know, to find a bright orange color out in the wilderness. But those are really our only complaints. Otherwise, it's super roomy. Gets great airflow. It's a three season tent, so we probably won't be using this in the winter, but yeah, um, it's been a nice upgrade for us. It's much lighter and just makes our lives a lot better as far as carrying a tent goes. So yeah, I guess with that, we'll talk about the things that usually go inside of the tent. Sleeping essentials, uh, basically just Three things. We have our sleeping bag, which hasn't changed. We are still using the Mamut Perform Down sleeping bag. Uh, we've gone over a lot of this information before, but this is actually a cold weather sleeping bag. It's like 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus seven degrees Celsius. But yeah, we just bring these bags all year long. Even if it's hot outside, we figure you can just unzip it and sleep naked if you're hot. But if you get cold, you're gonna be pretty damn happy you have one of these. So yeah, that's the only bag we have and the only bag we use. Also, it packs down pretty small. So for a high quality bag in a small size, I think this is the best you can get. Um, pillows, we're still using these just like cheap generic pillows. Almost every brand makes one. They look like this and you just blow air into it. Not that comfortable, but keeps your head elevated, which is kind of nice and it packs down super small. And this, is our new sleeping pad. Um, these are brand new. I don't know if we've talked about them before, but we're using the Big Agnes Insulated Q-Core SLX. Um, so these are a lot bigger than what we used to use, but so much more comfortable. And again, if it's cold outside, they keep you off the ground, they keep you off the snow. You're just gonna stay so much warmer and they're like three inches thick when you blow them up, so super comfortable. I mean, it's like sleeping on a regular air mattress. But yeah, we don't really have any complaints about them. Unfortunately, they're a little bit bigger, but you gotta sacrifice on some things. So this is one of the things we sacrifice on. And yeah, unfortunately they are inflatable, so they can pop. We do carry like some patches and stuff that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I just think inflatable pads are a little more comfortable, so. Okay, so we all know the most important part of backpacking is the food. And we gotta have a way to cook it, we gotta have a way to store it, so I'm just gonna go through our whole setup here. So, the first thing, this is our stove. Um, it's called the MSR Pocket Rocket. As you can see, it's super small, compact, and nice and light. Our old setup, it was like a pot which had the, the stove on the bottom. It was just huge, clunky, didn't pack well. So we got this guy. And it just connects to a fuel canister like this. And then all we have to do is bring our extra cup here. And this cup is only for boiling water. We don't put any food in here, so it stays clean. Um, and yeah, we just boil water. Um, and how we cook our food is through these insulated mugs. So what we usually do is boil our water, put the dry food in here, put the water in there, close it up, food cooks, and you're ready to eat. And it stays hot. And it stays nice and hot, surprisingly. So this is actually an off-brand insulated mug we found on Amazon called Sunwill. I'm sure you can find any kind of brand and it would work just fine. Um, and then utensils, little fork and spoon action find these anywhere I'm sure um, then there's one thing that we are willing to sacrifice weight for which is uh, this coffee grinder <laughs> it's made by vessel um, it is slightly heavy but I mean 
for a good cup of coffee in the backcountry in the morning, oh, there is no other experience like it. And then how we make our coffee is just pour over style. So we have this collapsible pour over cup. We just put it on top of our mug, have a filter, then you got your coffee. Okay, now let's talk about um, food storage, which I'm not, we're not really too stoked about this, but we'll, we're gonna talk about it anyways. Okay. This is our bear canister. It is by Bear Vault. It's called a BV450. And uh, we don't like it because, first of all, it's huge. Like, it's way bigger than my head. It's heavy um, and it just doesn't pack well. But a lot of wilderness areas, a lot of national parks require bear canisters. And we've been renting bear canisters for years, so we just figured that we would just get our own. So, this is that. Ideally though, we would go to a place where it doesn't require a bear canister and this is what we would do. We'd put all of our food in a dry bag like this, fold it up, lock it down, and then we have our paracord. We just sling it over a tree and have it high enough so bears don't reach it. Um, and that would be ideal because this packs down super nice, it's light and whatnot. But you know, we got two options depending on where we go. Obviously, in the backcountry, you're gonna need water as well. Uh, you can survive three minutes without air, three days without water, and three weeks without food. So, water's pretty important. Um, this year, our water setup is basically just this. We have a one liter platypus bladder, a Sawyer mini filter, and a Nalgene to hold our water. So, these filters, if you don't know, can filter pretty much any fresh water, whether it's ponds or streams or rivers or melted snow or whatever it might be. So yeah, we pretty much never carry water with us. We just find it in the backcountry and filter it. So we do carry two filters because you never know. If one of them freezes or it breaks or you lose it or something like that, you've only got three days until you're dead. <laughs> so uh, an extra always comes in handy. We keep this like in our first aid kit or something. But yeah, we basically just fill up this platypus, squeeze the water into our Nalgene's, and we're good to go. So, a lot of people will take these filters and put them on a smart water bottle, which is really convenient. You can kind of just walk, fill up your bottle, and drink straight out of the filter. Um, but we opted for the Nalgene's this year because we want to do more mountainous stuff. We want to be able to climb and all of that, and trying to drink out of a filter while you're like up on a wall isn't really gonna work. So the Nalgene's are super durable, they don't leak, and yeah, they're easy access to water. So it's a pretty simple setup, but that's what we're gonna be using this year, and we've never had a problem. I mean, we've filtered some pretty interesting water with these things and never gotten sick, so. <laughs> Aid is pretty important. For the longest time, we didn't carry a kit at all. And then we started listening to this podcast called Out Alive, which is basically just nonstop stories of people almost dying in the backcountry and how they survived. So, highly recommend it. But yeah, that was pretty much the biggest inspiration for us to build a little aid kit. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of go through what's in here. Um, it's kind of some random stuff that's more geared towards like just staying alive. Um, we kind of decided like a lot of first aid things like band-aids and ointments and that sort of stuff. It's like if I'm hurt to where I only need a band-aid, like I'm not really that hurt. So like this stuff is more for like I might actually die. So I'm glad I have these things. Um, First up, we have an emergency lighter that we keep in a Ziploc bag so that it always stays dry if we get in a rainstorm or something. Uh, yeah, we're still gonna have a working lighter. Um, this little tin has, you might be able to see it, like a fire kind of logo on it. You could probably see this one better. Um, this is where we keep fire starter. So a super good fire starter for the backcountry is a cotton ball, like soaked or rubbed with Vaseline burns for a really long time, super cheap, and will definitely help you get a fire going. Um, next, we just got this stuff, we haven't used it yet, but it was highly recommended by an alpine guide that I'm a huge fan of. 
So this is called Tear Aid. You basically can just use it to like fix things that tear, like your sleeping pad or your tent or your rain jacket, anything. It's waterproof, sticks really well, and apparently works super good. We've never had to use it. Um, we have some tape. This could be used for a hundred different things, obviously. Um, it's orange so that it's very visible. So say we're lost and we want to be able to find our way back somewhere, we can kind of make trail markers along the way or you can use it to repair stuff or whatever else you would use tape for, pretty obvious. Um, this is just a mirror. So mirrors um, can be seen up to 25 miles away. So if you're stranded and you're like trying to flag down a helicopter or something, you can literally just shine the mirror at them and it should help you get located a little better. Obviously there's other things you might wanna do too, like very bright clothing or whatever, but this thing could save your life and it weighs like pretty much nothing. This is just a random cloth. You just soak it in water and it turns into a cloth. So, I don't know, use it to stop bleeding or whatever. We have an emergency blanket. Um, somebody gets super injured and they can't move. A lot of times when you have a really bad injury, you're gonna lose body heat and yeah, this could really come in handy. You never know, we're gonna carry this like when we leave the tent and the sleeping bags and all that stuff down at camp. We'll have this in our climbing bags just in case we need a like emergency bivy or something. Yeah, so emergency blanket, again, super cheap. I think I got four of them on Amazon for like 10 bucks or something. And the last thing is an ace bandage. Again, 10,000 different uses for this thing. Um, you can use it to splint something. You can use it to make a sling, a tourniquet maybe, or something to stop bleeding. Um, so yeah, no band-aids, no gauzes. We'll probably add like some Advil or something, but mostly just geared towards like, what things am I gonna wish that I had if I was like about to die in the wilderness? So something to think about. That's what we keep. Everybody's might be a little bit different, but yeah, we just keep it in this little pouch with a piece of tape that says eight on it. Okay, so here is just some little things that we have that don't really have its own category. So this is just accessories, I guess. Uh, so first thing, headlamp. Headlamp's really important, you know, it gets dark, so you want some light sometimes. Um, this is our new headlamp, actually. It's uh, Petzl Actic Core. It's 600 lumens. It has like three different modes on it. It's rechargeable, but you can also use AAA batteries. So if you didn't have any sort of like power bank to bring with you in the backcountry to recharge these, you could bring extra batteries just in case this dies. So super stoked about this guy. Can't wait to use it this summer. Knife. I think it's just important to bring a knife. You never know. Toothbrushes. Pretty self-explanatory, it's just a regular toothbrush. We just cut it in half to save weight and for it to pack a little bit easier. Toothpaste, travel size. I have this microfiber towel, which some people are asking us how we like stay clean or what do we do for hygiene in the backcountry. To be honest, we don't really do anything. You could bring baby wipes, but we just don't. Like Cody was saying, most of the time we're staying by a lake or a river or just some kind of water source because we need the water anyways. So if you feel like we want to take a shower, we'll just jump in the lake, kind of rub down with this and give ourselves a little like water sponge bath. I don't know. Um, and it works. I mean, we're in the backcountry, we're camping. I'm not trying to impress anybody. We're going to stink. So that's just how it is. Toilet paper, always pack more than you think because you just never know. And you don't want to be in those situations where it's like you don't have anything to wipe yourself. Um, and then the last thing is Hazel's pack. Um, this is the Mountain Smith K9 pack. I think this is their only dog pack that they have on their website. Um, she hates this thing. I'm sure it works just fine. <laughs> she just hates wearing harnesses for some reason. But I really like this because it has a ton of zippers. It has this one and it has the main compartment here on both sides. So she can carry all of her stuff and maybe even some of our stuff if she's willing. Um, this is her bowl for like water and I have another bowl on this side for food. Just collapses down um, and that's her, pretty much her bowls. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have some of this stuff. You just gotta have these little things. Hi, but you gotta have a backpack for your dog. She's like, what did he say, mom? <laughs> what did he say? 
All right, we're getting down to the end here. So people are gonna ask us about our clothes, so. I hate to break it to you, but we're not very fashionable and we don't have many. Yeah, we just keep it simple. Variables. Like simplicity is the best when you're out in the wilderness, so. Yeah, we pretty much decided we're only going to wear one outfit every time we go out in the backcountry. Yeah, it just is better. You carry way less stuff and you're gonna be stinking either way. So you might as well just wear the same outfit the whole time. So yeah. I guess we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. We both have the same pair of shoes. They are the Danner Trail 2650. I've had these shoes for over a year now and literally this is my only pair of shoes that I wear and they're still holding up strong. They're sick, they're super comfy. This is my second pair, which tells you I liked them so much I bought them again. Yeah. But we just do everything in them, climb, hike, not bike, but you know, go to Walmart. <laughs> They're like our, our everyday shoes that we just wear for adventures. Yep. So after that, pants. My pants are from the North Face. Um, these are the only pants I ever wear, like when we go backpacking. I don't know the exact model, but they're just lightweight hiking pants. I think they also make them with like a zip off, which I think is cool. Some people hate on it, but <laughs> you get shorts and pants at the same time, so. I like it. Mine's a North Face too. I actually found these pants at a thrift store in Colorado, so I'm not really sure they make this model anymore, uh, but I think the closest to it is called Class B Ankle. Um, they're just like super lightweight, they're durable, and just super comfy. I, I really like them. Yeah, I think we both have agreed, like, you don't want to cheap out on like your hiking pants. Yeah. Um, definitely go with one of the reputable brands, whether that's North Face or Patagonia or whatever. They're all pretty good but the cheap ones are all pretty bad. So. Yep. But my top is, uh, it's just a sun hoodie, found it on Amazon, one with like good reviews. And so far I've really, really liked it. Um, the only complaint I have is that it holds my stench pretty well. <laughs> we just out here stinking. We be stinking out here. That's just how it goes though. I mean, this is just a regular cotton t-shirt I got from Target. Um, a lot of times I'll either wear a hoodie like she's wearing if I don't want to get burnt or just whatever t-shirt I have in my drawer. Um, I don't know, we tend not to take our clothes that seriously unless there's like extreme weather or something, then obviously you gotta think a little bit more about it, but mm -hmm. beautiful day like today, you just kinda wear whatever you want. Puppies. The next, the rest of the stuff would just be like layers. So we mm -hmm. pretty much wear these outfits. We don't bring any pajamas, we don't change our clothes. We'll bring like extra socks and extra underwear. Yeah, but otherwise I'm wearing this outfit the whole time, whether it's three days or five days, I don't care. <laughs> Um, but then you have to think about layers, right? So like we almost always bring a puffy. Mm -hmm. You just never know. If it gets really windy, the temperature is gonna drop like crazy. So it comes in handy, keeps you warm. Definitely get one with a hood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have the backcountry puffy. Oh yeah. Um, yep, hooded, got nice pockets in the front. Mine's made by Rab. Um, again, hooded. It's just nice when you're like out at dinner and it's dark and you're cold, put your hood on. Also comes in handy in your sleeping bag for a little extra warmth. Also comes in handy when there's mosquitoes out, you just wanna cover your head. True, yeah, so definitely get something with a hood. Also bring a beanie. Pretty much, we're pretty much always bringing these two with us. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is gonna be weather dependent, right? So if you're in the PNW and like it rains all the time, you might wanna bring a rain jacket. But Other clothes, I mean, we'll always probably bring a hat. hat sunglasses. Sun protection. Oakley, Sutro. Somebody asked me about those, so those are the sunglasses I wear. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, yeah. we just, like, it's not that exciting. It's just yeah. clothes. Socks. <laughs> I like smart wool, but wool socks is probably the best choice for, like, Moisture wicking. They just dry and they don't stink as bad. Yeah. So those are our clothes. Um, and yeah, not much left to talk about except... Electronics. Electronics. Technology, camera gear, all the stuff for the tech nerds. Um, I actually just bought a new camera, so the camera we're using now is gonna change pretty soon, but right now we're using the Sony a7 IV with the Sigma 24-70 f2.8. Uh, it's the art lens, and we're using the Sennheiser MKE 200 microphone. So that's it. We don't change lenses, we don't carry any other camera gear besides this tripod, which is the Peak Design Travel Tripod carbon fiber edition because it's a little bit lighter but yeah that's like all of our camera gear that we use to make our videos um we also bring our iphones obviously somebody the other day asked if we ever bring a paper map and no we just bring our iphones we download our maps with an app called onyx backcountry 
which is the best. It just has like everything you could ever need, all of your maps and trails and 3D models and whatever. It's super cool. Um, and then we have a power bank. This is how we charge our camera, charge our drone if we bring it. Obviously, we charge our cell phones. Yeah, that's the technology. One other thing that we do carry is the Peak Design Capture Clip. If you've ever watched our videos, you notice like the camera just hangs on our backpack like this. And that's because we're using the Peak Design Capture Clip. It's just the best invention ever. Um, it keeps your camera accessible, but it also allows you to use your hands if you're scrambling or climbing or whatever you're doing. And we have never, knock on wood, had our camera fall off of it. So yeah, I think that's all of the gear. I mean, we're literally ready to camp right now. So we have everything we need and we've shown it all to you. So, so there you go. The updated backpacking gear video for 2023. Yeah, we've made a lot of changes over the years and it'll probably continue to change like as our lives and goals change. I think change. it's always an evolving thing, you know? Some people pack much lighter than we do, other people pack much heavier. Yeah. There's no real like right or wrong way to do it. You kind of just figure it out along the way. And yeah, this is the stuff that works for us. It might not work for you, but fortunately we're not trying to sell you anything in this video. Yeah, nothing so. sponsored in this video. I don't care if you buy any of this stuff. <laughs> uh, it's just the stuff that works for us. Yeah, so. but we will link everything that we talked about today in the description below. So if you do want to check it out. Links are down there. You. Yeah, and uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. We pretty much always reply to questions, but yeah. This will probably be the last time we sit down and talk to the camera for a while. We've got permits for next week. We're gonna finally get out on a backpacking trip. And from there, the world is our oyster. We have so many plans. Yeah, so adventure videos are coming back soon. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching this one. Don't forget to subscribe. We always forget to ask, but subscribing is the easiest way to support this channel. So if you enjoy the videos, click the subscribe button. Yep. But. With that? <laughs> With that, we're going on adventures, baby, yeah. all summer long. We out. We're going to go edit this video, and then we're gone. We're gone. we gone. we in the backcountry, baby, looking for bears. Preferably not bears. Just, <gasps> just dogs. Just good vibes. Yeah. But thanks for watching. We appreciate it, guys. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace out. Hazel, say bye to everybody. She's like, what? <laughs> That's a good all right, now I gotta pack all this stuff up. I know. Yeah, we got to go fake camping. We'll just stay. We could. We literally have all of our stuff. We'll just stay here. Do we have food? Yeah. Oh, we I got... don't have Hazel's food. We got some taters. Can Hazel have taters? Hazel, you can have some taters for a day, huh? Mm -hmm. All right.